What does it take to become a doctor? These are the real life stories of McMaster University's med students. On this episode of Med Students, while a brand new freshman class is initiated into med school, the second year students graduate to clerkship. Emily and Aaron are assigned to family medicine. Ira and Sam fight fatigue in the ER. It's just tough, you know, that's the hardest part, not getting to see my family as much as I'd like to. This nice winter park that I borrowed from a friend to take me to Thunder Bay. Emily Ellingson and the class of 2005 are starting clerkship, the grueling final stretch of med school when training is all hands-on. It could stretch Emily beyond her limits. She's legally blind. Retinitis pigmentosus is a, usually a hereditary de degenerative eye condition which affects your retina. And because it is progressive, I, I feel like I'm always working at compensating and it's on a slow slow progressive basis but still I feel like I'm always sort of learning to to navigate and work with my site. To make the situation even more difficult Emily will be working in family practice 1400 kilometers north in Thunder Bay in the winter. My, uh, those big boots in the closet you know what I'm talking about? Away from her husband Aaron. On the right the yeah, I rely on him for a lot of support. Just all the time, he's always there, and he knows sort of what I can see and what I can't see, and even emotional support, so uh, we're, we're best friends, so it's gonna be different being gone from him for three months. Um. And if that weren't enough stress, in three days, Emily will receive test results that could tell her how much more time she has before she faces total blindness. Those ones, or do you have newer ones? As a young husband and father, clerkship will certainly be tough on Ira Price. This is my third on-call shift in seven days, so that's, that's tiring. I worked last Monday, last Wednesday, and now today. It's difficult on his entire family. It, it all ends up falling in my lap sometimes, and I'm learning how to deal with it. That's what's resulted in terms of clerkship. And in terms of our own relationship, we've really had to find the time and dig the time, because when Ira comes home, he's exhausted. I've got to do 10 on-call shifts in six weeks, and that includes being there from 8 in the morning one day till uh, 12 o'clock the next afternoon, and you're lucky if you get out at 12 o'clock. It's definitely hard, and we notice his absence in this house, especially my son. He's almost two years old, and he runs around the house looking for Daddy, because unfortunately Daddy is not around. We're looking at the big picture, and that's what keeps us going. Emily reports to the clinic in Thunder Bay, where she'll be spending the next two months learning to work as a family medicine physician. It's also her chance to find out if being legally blind will compromise her ability to perform well. It's been fine because Katie, my roommate, has been great and I don't really feel like I need a lot of help for getting around. It's more just the driving part. Okay, so here's how you're going to be seen on this. I can record. Emily is supervised by McMaster grad Dr. Dave Probozanski. He has a unique way to keep an eye on her. Take history, I'll be out here watching. Okay. Hi, this is Tennant. Yep, Probozanski. Actually, we've got a good setup, a good layout. Okay. You know, got them both centered and I can watch both expressions. Have you been monitoring your blood pressure at home or are no. you just no. doing it in the doctor's office? So we'll take your blood pressure today. Emily's first patient, Mrs. Tennant, is being monitored for high blood pressure that puts her at risk for stroke. Have you had any problems, any chest pain or anything like that? No. I hope it's not up. And are you having any difficulty remembering to take your pills every day? No way. Okay. The result of her blood pressure test is alarming. Okay, so your blood pressure is quite high. Do you know, do you know anything about your blood pressure readings that they normally are? 
times 160, 170. Okay. So today it's 230 over 110. Holy Nelly. This is a little nerve wracking, isn't it? You know, when you come in to see the doctor. We've got her on, on two medications for blood pressure, but I think we have to add a third. Okay. Because that's too high. Mm -hmm. Can't really let her walk around with that. That's a stroke risk. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you give her? What would I give her? Yeah, I got your patient. Calcium channel blocker? Yeah, I think that's a class we haven't touched yet. Just on the history of cancer. Yep. Congestive heart failure. So anyways, in the first couple of weeks, you will feel dizzy, but that's normal. And if you have any problems, of course, call the office. Mm -hmm. But that's normal. Ira's clerkship assignment is in internal medicine. Today, he's working at Hamilton General Hospital. His patient, Lilia, has landed in the ER in DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, she hasn't taken enough insulin, and as a result, her body's chemistry has become toxic. Eh, it's a little worse. Good. Have you been monitoring your sugars well? No. No. <laughs> Why not? Because I never do. Okay. We've got fluid going in you. We've got the ABG off. We're attempting to stabilize the, your situation right now. I'll be back in a sec. I'm just going to go and get this stuff off, okay? There's two major issues, right? One is uh, in infection, and the other is non-compliance with uh, medications. But you also just recently had a, a cold, you mentioned? Pneumonia. Oh, a pneumonia. So that we're going to put in your past medical history. Ch any chest pain? Was it in your chest? Were you short of breath at all? Yeah, after I'd go into a coffee pit, I would be. Any palpitations, heart palpitations? Did you notice your pulse starting to race? Yeah. Do you smoke? Yes. How much do you smoke? About a pack every two to three days. What about alcohol? Not lately. When I worked in the bar, I had, I drank way more. Okay, but you weren't monitoring your blood sugars at that time? Yeah. Okay. I think uh, it might be time to start taking care of your diabetes. It's a pretty serious state that you're in now. You don't want to be in that state. By not taking care of her diabetes, Lilia is risking amputation, blindness, and even death. It will be up to Ira and the ER staff to try to get her body chemistry stabilized. As the class of 2005 moves into clerkship, Kelsey Enrig and the class of 2006 get ready to be inducted into med school in the white coat ceremony. Go longer. Uh, my mom is here from Vancouver, so she's going to be coming to the white coat with me. My roommate too, she's again in first year as well. Dear God, thank you so much for this food and for this opportunity um, to go to the ceremony tonight. And I just thank you for everything that you give us and that you love us. Amen. Amen. For some students, the white coat ceremony marks the fulfillment of a dream to get into med school. Kelsey sees it as just the beginning. It's kind of a symbol of what we've decided to do and of the future of where we will be in a few years. Still, putting on the official med student jacket could make anyone a little uneasy. I think in everything that is really great and fulfilling in life, too, there is an element of fear. Ira reports his findings on Lilia, the patient suffering from diabetic ketoacidosis. So she presents today with, with, um, with a two-day history of a cold, with a dry cough, um, and shortness of breath with it. She, uh, she, ha she has no documented fever. She says, though, that she felt a fever, but she doesn't have a, uh, she doesn't have a thermometer at home. She checks her blood glucose maybe twice a week, three times a week at max. She's been in numerous occasions in DKA, hospital admissions, most of them suggesting that she ends up in DKA due to um, <clears throat> noncompliance, maybe also with a secondary infection taking place at the same time. Um, She's not even sure how much insulin she takes. Yeah. Has it been just like um, one moment she's okay, next moment she's in, in DKA? That's what she's noticed. This right. is like, but I asked her if like this is like, is this normal for you? And yeah, this is, I've been here before for this, right? right? She's starting to stabilize. Chest x-ray no shows infiltrate. no infiltrate. 
Right, so the big challenge will be how to provide this in the future. Yeah, called yeah. social mm -hmm. work for mm -hmm. her as well, and we mm -hmm. had a talking to her, and Peter also uh, gave her a, a, a good talk as well. Lilia will remain in hospital until her diabetic condition has been fully stabilized. That was the first DK that I've dealt with. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. That was a great experience, actually. Okay, I'm just gonna just look straight ahead. I'm just gonna look in your ear. Back in Thunder Bay, Emily works her way through the busy appointment schedule of a family medicine physician. Great. Right. Nice meeting you. Being legally blind isn't giving her any problem at all. She works like a pro, until she gets stumped by the question of nasal spray for plug sinuses. You take a history of environmental allergies and take okay. a history of, uh, does he have forced air, does he have pets, does he have hardwood, does he have carpets? Um, I don't know if you asked him any of that stuff. Not really, no. I was, it, I was more in terms of like this, uh, looking at more from a cold perspective, I guess, like if he had any ear problems or other throat involvement or any um, antibiotic use lately or anything like that. He's that one, eh? Yeah, so besides from missing the entire <laughs> allergic response to <laughs> using nasal spray, I got that. Got I just find it funny if you get off the on the wrong tangent. <laughs> like, like that's that's the best. Um, it's always easier, to remember, for the preceptor to go in and, and mop it up and, mm -hmm. and, and redirect. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot harder when when you're in there taking the history for the first time. Yeah. Like, trying to figure out what, what's going on with this patient. Like Emily, Erin Carter is doing her first clerkship rotation in family medicine, but she's been able to stay put in Hamilton. For me, it turned out to be pretty interesting because the family doctor that I'm working with also has some special training in um, sports injuries and that sort of thing. So it's also sports medicine, which is something I really didn't know much about. So I've been learning a lot. It's been pretty good. Sports medicine may be interesting, but all that anatomy can be daunting. To be honest, I'm a little bit uh, scared of the sports medicine stuff because I really don't have very much training in that area. And uh, Dr. Trin's really amazing, so uh, it's a bit intimidating. I. Uh, Last night I was working on my shoulder exam, which is a little bit weak for me. So if there's a shoulder exam today, I really hope it goes okay. It's a good thing Erin did her homework. Her first patient has a very painful shoulder injury. Always have some notes in your back pocket so you can stand in the hall and quickly look at them if you get a chance before you go in. So I'm just gonna quickly, uh, quickly kind of get in my mind what I wanna do when I go in there. Just two months into medical school, Kelsey and her tutorial group are already seeing patients in the intensive care unit. We're learning to be doctors, and these people are in a totally different place. They're at the lowest point in their life, in a sense. Barb is recovering from a heart surgery that is complicated by a long history of health problems. She's agreed to let Kelsey conduct a physical exam to get some practice. Now, then what are we going to do? For cuts. For cuts. Okay. Tell Look at the patient. Tell me if anything hurts, okay? You're not doing hard enough. It's a bit hollow, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 What's with this brutality? You're being too gentle. Learning to touch patients yeah. with confidence can be tricky for a brand new med student. Is that tender, Barbara? She's not very, she's very gentle. I'm scared to hurt you. A little too gentle. Okay, yeah. so watch me, Kelsey. Dr. Allison Fox Robichaux, with years of experience, shows a sure hand. That right. That's tender. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Erin does some last minute cramming before facing her first shoulder exam. Okay, I think I'm ready. Maybe you could tell me what's going on with your shoulder. I'm sorry, I've got laryngitis. Laryngitis, okay, no problem. I'll come a little closer. So. <coughs> Um, did you injure it? Is it is it an old injury or? Just shoveling walks. Shoveling walkways. Okay. So come on in here. Let's give us a little bit more space to work. What I want you to do is to to move up, and as you get up to the top, I'm going to push a little bit. Do you feel any pain in here? When I push down, how's that? That hurts. Try to curl in. I think most of uh, what's going on is uh, under your AC joint. You have some bones that meet up here in your shoulder, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you've got a little bit of inflammation mm -hmm. under that under that bone. And I'm going to take a quick look at your X-ray while we wait for Dr. Trin. 
to you. I miss her already. This is the worst part about being here all friggin' night. Never see my family. Ira manages a quick phone call home in the middle of his shift. Hope you're doing well. Love you. I hope you well. went to sleep all right. Um, it's just going to be a crazy night. No sleep for me tonight. It's going to be a long, long night. I can't even think right now. So I started this morning at 8, and uh, I get home tomorrow at around 1, 1.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, so hope you uh, get to see uh, your attending physician on their, on their 36th hour of work. It's a lot of fun. No, but you know what? You kind of get used to it. Uh, I never will. <laughs> Ira's classmate, Sam Stone, starts his clerkship in the emergency room at McMaster Hospital. Jarrett was knocked out while playing hockey. Every trauma to the head has the potential to be deadly. Although he's conscious now, Jarrett could be bleeding internally. Sam will immediately start a neurological exam to look for symptoms of brain injury. With this, with this finger, just touch your nose, then touch my finger, then touch your nose, then touch my finger, then touch your nose, then touch my finger. Shin pad come right up. Sam continues the neurological exam on his head injury patient. You okay? Yeah. She remember he's a doctor, not a tape remover. <laughs> the standard exam includes a walking test. Getting this patient up on his feet is a little tricky. Can you stand? Probably. Show me. Can you walk back on your toes? I feel comfortable enough with my skills that I can do a history and I can do a physical. You got to walk in and feel comfortable and be respectful of how the patient's doing and able to get the job done so that I have the history and the physical and I can start doing the next steps. Can you your fingers okay? Yeah. It doesn't look like there's anything broken, doesn't look like there's any neurological problems. Just wait and see how he's doing when we come back and, and then he can go home. I think that uh, all we're really going to Erin reviews uh, x-rays for her shoulder injury patient before consulting with supervising physician Dr. Ken Trin. So Mr. Young is a 50-year-old um, man who has come into the office with right shoulder pain. I think that probably he's got something going on um, under the AC joint, maybe um, a bit of inflammation. What do you think is the the most common cause of why he has pain. Now. I think he's probably a good possibility he has an AC joint separation again. Let's go and take a look at him. Yeah. Should we take him into the physio room? Is a bit more room right here, okay. Okay, yeah. okay, so I'm just feeling along the clavicle for any sort of uh, deformity in the bone. Do you want to show me some of the special tests that you did? Want okay, to so I wanted to make sure that everything was okay, that he wasn't having a rotator cuff, and he didn't have any problem with that. How far do I want them to reach? They can rest more, there. More or less as if they put a scarf on. Any pain on that. It's funny, I was worried about a shoulder injury, and uh, of course it's the first thing that I see when I come into the office, but um, I was really glad that I read up on it last night, and um, I think it went okay. I mean, I still feel like I have a lot to learn, but uh, Dr. Trin's a really good teacher. One tablet, once a day? Yep. Okay. We'll see how you're doing in a week or two. I feel better already. Okay, thanks so much. I think that my biggest advice to people who are thinking about coming to medical school would be you need to know why you want to be here because, you know, the sacrifices are many and I don't think it can be, you know, because you, know, you have a romantic vision of what it is to be a doctor or the status of doing that sort of thing and, or it's money or whatever. You know, you need to know that your reasons are really solid for why you want to come here. You need to know that you feel passionate about it and that's what's going to carry you through. You're going to work harder than you've ever worked in your life. so. You need to, you know, you need to feel really good about doing it. You need to know why you're doing it. So that would probably be my advice. And although medical school means sacrifice for Emily as well, she has no regrets. I think the best thing about medical school is that I love it. I think it just opens up so many possibilities. And honestly, in terms of what I'm doing with my time, I can't really think of a better place I'd be. The test results on Emily's eye disease have come in. She'll likely face blindness before her 40th birthday. 
they said that I have no activity um, from the photoreceptors, my rods, which are the per peripheral vision, and I had abnormal activity from my cones, which is my central vision, and that the back of my eyes, my retina, was um, did not look healthy either, that there was decreased blood flow. So again, even though this is a sort of results that I expected to hear and I knew it and I predicted that even before, just having somebody say it to you is sometimes a little bit harder and so I kind of had a bum day that day. Despite the pressures on Ira's schedule, he finds it crucial to find time for a workout. It's like a mixture between combat Tai Chi and Aikido. It's kind of like dancing with it without the music. It's very calming when you're in a pressured situation. It actually helps me medicine. One deep breath, out, in, out, you know, and then it's like you're grounded. So start that, go. Back and forth, work it back and forth. You gotta have a balance, otherwise it just get overwhelmed and bogged down. There are other things that are important in life as well, not just, you know, family is very important to me as well to me, so. Just gotta, gotta keep everything in perspective. It, it kinda helps you in life, just, just sort of, you know, focusing. On the next episode of Med Students, Vikram works with a worried cancer survivor. Kathleen toughs it out in the ER. And Sam deals with inner stress with an inner tube. It's going to get ugly, but it'll be fun whatever happens. <laughs>